And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today with Sales Mindset, we are here with the great Eric Swick. Eric, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. We were just getting on a roll before talking about some of our philosophies and sales and business and leadership. So let's, um, let's dial it back a few, a few minutes. So tell me, what are some of your main philosophies for leadership and sales success? Sure. I think you can look at that from a, a bunch of different perspectives, right? So as a leader, uh, you can be different types of leaders. You can be a coach. Uh, you can be a boss to, you know, salespeople. Uh, you can be a parent. And in each of those instances, you're, you know, you're essentially uh, showing, you're being a model for people. And um, really, I think, what I'm looking for as a coach or a parent or a boss is I, I want people who have learned to be great at something. Okay. Because there's a process to it and it's highly generalizable. So once you do it, you can take that and, and apply it to pretty much everything in your life. And the more things you master, I think the, the more top down perspective you get, um, in other areas. So that, that would be kind of my philosophy is, hey, look, um, if I'm a boss, I'm hoping you've already become great at something and can tell me every step of the way how you've got there. That means you really understand yourself um, and, and really you know what you're good at and, and know what you're not good at, right? Um, and you know, as a boss or as a, as a, a coach, you know, I'm looking at these kids and, and I'm, I'm trying to kind of lead them along the path that they can, they can then examine later to say, what, what are the commonalities that, that helped me improve um, through this? So, um, so I think that's kind of my leadership philosophy. Um, when it comes to an athlete or a salesperson or, you know, just a, we'll call, uh, you know, a kid in general, um, I'd say, you know, don't recreate the wheel. Um, you find the things that you're good at, right? Um, so you find the things that you're good at, you get, get in your repetitions, right? You commit to incremental improvement. You're showing up every day and you're doing the work. And then you got to pay attention. You got to log the data, right? If, if you work hard, but you're not thinking about how it relates, what you're doing and how it relates to, to your success and improvement, um, then you're just kind of wasting your time. So if you're not logging your data, um, you're never gonna be able to find the patterns that make you succeed. And uh, once you find those patterns, you can, you can be actually predictive, you know? Um, so you can cause situations or actions that you you know are coming that you have moves for or answers for or you know uh, a description of your product with somebody with that question right so um i guess those are, are kind of my my five pieces uh, if i'm an athlete i'm saying okay well i want to do more of what i'm good at because i can bear getting in the repetitions and I really like paying attention because it's interesting to me, partially because I'm good at it. And it's kind of this positive feedback loop. So um, I guess that's, those, those are kind of some of the uh, leadership uh, and sales philosophies I have. Makes a lot of sense. The data is important. I always say, if you're not assessing, you're guessing. Yeah, whether, absolutely. Whether it's personal training, nutrition plan, sales, it doesn't matter. You want, to be, you want to be putting that pen to paper and, and logging and journaling. And, and like you said, how important it is to have those questions written out, writing down what went well, what did not go well. Because, mm -hmm. and, you, and you hit on this where sometimes we do things well and, and we can't call it to mind. It's not conscious. And then we, we can't replicate it in the future. And that's yep. the thing. If we have a great performance, we want to replicate it. If we have a poor performance, we want to make sure we know what it is so we could avoid that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, I mean, <clears throat> when I, I remember as a, a kid, uh, VHS tapes. Oh yeah. Right? And, uh, as a kid, we'd go to a wrestling tournament and, uh, my dad would, 
record on his, you know, big handheld on his shoulder. And, you know, I would watch those things in slow motion, frame by frame, a hundred times. And, you know, I would just, I would say, okay, well, what could I do better here? What could I do better here? What, to, you know, and, uh, you know, if you find something you really like to do, it's easy to get obsessive about it, you know? Right. And it's going to, and it's going to take a, a borderline obsession to be very successful at something because you're competing against other high level people and, and also just competing about yourself with yourself from mm -hmm. never mind other people, but always trying to get to the next level. That's why like maybe putting in a, a timed mile run, you're, you're going against the clock. You're going against yourself. Well, it's the same thing with performance in sales. You really are battling yourself. Yeah. I think, you know, I think people and who say the, that. the biggest opponent, Go ahead. Sorry. I, the biggest, well, no, you, um, well, I just think people who achieve at really high levels, they, um, you know, they're, they're always very self-critical and, uh, they, they do a lot of, uh, dissection frame by frame of, uh, you know, what they could have done better. And really, I think the mental struggles that most people have are probably related to the fact that, they don't really take ownership of their involvement when they don't meet their goals, right? So if, if my goal in sales is to get this customer to use my product and I go into their office um, and the first question they ask me, I don't really know or have a good answer to, all right? Um, well, you know, whose fault is that? You know, and, you know, you can go two ways with that. You can bring it on yourself and you can say, well, I'm going to log that data and I'm going to make sure that I never don't have an answer for that question again. Or you can just kind of ignore it and be like, well, that was kind of a, an out of the way question. Just kind of let it slip through your mind. And, you know, those are the, the mi minute decisions that people who become champions, they don't let they don't let that stuff slide. You know, they take care of that immediately. Um, you know, they, they find different ways to implement those small course correctors earlier on in the process. Over time, it, it, it really has an exponential effect. Absolutely. We always say it's better to do a little a lot than a lot a little. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a big thing. And, and over time, it's that's consistency over time. And a lot of people just don't have that patience, that discipline, um, that perseverance to stay in it for the long haul. Talk about how maybe your wrestling career and your involvement in sports has helped to lead to that, that patience, that perseverance, that chopping away. <laughs> I don't have patience. <laughs> I don't have any patience. I'm, 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 I'm awful there, so I can't claim patience. But, but delayed gratification. We might not be patient. You can delay yeah. gratification. Okay. I'll, I'll concede to that. Absolutely. There we go. No. So, um, well, so how, how has sports impacted me? Um, you know, I think we kind of talked a little bit about it before. It's that being self-critical. And if you can implement a fix um up the chain further to solve to to create an environment where the problem never happens in the first place that's the ideal scenario like if you're in a wrestling match and uh you know this guy's getting to your single leg well the problem isn't that you can't defend a single leg the problem is that you're not hand fighting well enough right so you you want to go up the chain and and figure out the problem the uh you got to solve the problem of solving problems, right? Before they become problems. So, um, so that's, that's really what I learned. You got to be self-critical to do that. And then really you got to look for patterns, right? So um, in wrestling, I want, I want to create known move, movements, right? Because when I know something's going to happen, I can take that and work around it. Right. So, I mean, there's no difference in having a conversation with a prospective client in sales. It's like, uh, uh, so let's say you go into that same, uh, uh, another customer that uh, asks you the same question as the other guy. Well, now you got an answer, right? And you've had 80 other experiences where people ask you different questions 
and you've mapped out the pattern. what all the possibilities are in questions that I could get from somebody that I'm talking to. And I've thought through the answers and I've thought through what he might think about the answers and I've thought through what things he must about what I said. And um, so, so really, I think it, it's much like a wrestling match. You're visualizing a wrestling match in the same way you have a conversation with, um, you know, a prospective uh, buyer in something. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, those, like you said, those patterns are important because now you, you keep putting yourself in familiar territory and that automatically gives you an edge. You could recognize the pattern or put yourself into a pattern, whether it's sports, you know, getting into your groove, competing where you're good. And at the same time, having that conversation, knowing how they're going to, knowing your questions, knowing what their normal answers are, because it's usually not all over the place. It's the same two or three responses. So you become sharper. You have jokes that go with it. You know when to get serious. You know when to give them questions. It's, it's that, and it does give you that positive feedback, but you're creating it first by that pattern recognition. So yeah. how do you recommend people as best as you can take time out of the equation to develop those patterns as quickly as possible in sales? Well, um, so I, I, I think it, it helps to think kind of redu reductionistically, right? So you, you got a lot of information, you have a goal and you know, you, you walk, you walk a pathway to get to the goal and like a video game, you're going to hit a lot of dead ends and you're going to have to start over. And so I, I guess my advice in a business setting to pick up on those patterns is um, I think a lot of people go to work, but they don't, they don't practice, you know, they show up there, um, but maybe they don't think about it as critically. So then the, the question is, as a, as a salesperson, how do you, how do you pick up on the patterns and, and use them? Okay. So I think this is, I think, when you consider a question like that, it's, I try to always kind of break things down in, into the most, the least common denominator. So you're in an environment and you want to learn how to get to the top of the hierarchy of the environment, right? That's what you want to do in wrestling. That's ultimately what you want to do in business. And it turns out the way you get up hierarchies is, um, it's, it's a self-similar uh, self-similar processes, right? So the things that make you good about, uh, good at wrestling or getting good at wrestling will make you good at other things if you follow the, the process. So, um, you know, find single, you, he could react this way or he could react that way. Yep. So out of, out of certain possibilities will emerge, you know, as a standard set of common patterns right so um so you know that likely this is going to be the first reaction likely this is going to be the second there's probabilities in the whole thing right so um so what you do is you go into a new environment and you have a lot of data that you got to sort through and so what you have to do is um you got to first understand what the goal to get to the top is right so you got to have a clear goal and then you start following pathways to get there and you're going to make mistakes. That's life, right? Um, don't beat yourself up over it, uh, but take note and take it seriously when you make them. Um, you shouldn't be necessarily happy about making them, but I wouldn't beat yourself up over it. And as you go through, you're cataloging these mistakes so that you don't have to make them again. And, you know, I think it's partially necessary to go through the pain of making the mistakes. Otherwise, you know, I don't think it's, it's really productive, right? So, um, so you're, you're logging the mistakes, you're going through the pain of making the mistakes to, um, to catalog that. And, um, and, and so you start figuring out reductively what the best pathways to that end goal are. Um, it's, it's really not all that complica complicated. It's just being deliberate about doing it. It's, it's a habit. Right. I was going to actually ask you, one of the key questions I was going to ask you is some of the biggest mental mistakes you see salespeople make. And you kind of hit on one right there 
about maybe getting too um, down on ourselves after making a mistake or even too afraid of taking a chance because they might make a mistake. What are, can you elaborate on that or also on some of the other biggest mental mistakes you say? Yeah, I, I mean, um, so I think part of the piece of the mental mistakes is, uh, you know, people's tendency to remove themselves from the blame, uh, you know, a little bit. But also, I think it's a preparation issue. I mean, I think everybody's capable of being mentally tough. But, you know, unless you actually go to, you know, practice being mentally tough, you're not all of a sudden going to wake up one day and be like, oh, well, I saw a lecture on mental toughness. And now I'm tough. It's like you got to go through the pain of making the mistakes to understand that you can actually do it. You're always kind of seeking that, uh, I think you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. You're always kind of seeking that line of uh, new information, right? So the line between um, how to learn new things that kind of put you at risk, right? Um, versus hanging back, staying in your safe place with, but you're not really growing in terms of understanding new information, Staying right? In comfort zone, as opposed yeah. to pushing those boundaries on a regular yeah. basis, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, you look at guys like, you know, some of those guys that wrestle at just, you know, the pace they do, like David Taylor. It's like, you, I mean, it just seems like he he doesn't care. He's running through people. You know, he's he's he can do that because he's, he's been to places where these guys haven't been, you know, they, he's taking them into unexplored territory. Right. So, and people don't know what to do oftentimes on unexplored territory. That's where they freeze. And, you know, maybe they, for that split second, it gives an opportunity um, to them. So, you know, people like that are great at that. And I think you'll find that, that, you know, when you watch people are really good at what they do, um, you know, there's just something about him. I mean, Jordan Burroughs, I mean, he's, he's probably seeing three moves ahead, four moves ahead. And, and he doesn't even have to think about it. It's just his body reacts when it f feels that way. So I think the preparation, um, really probably alleviates a lot of the, the mental struggles. It's just, you have to understand that you actually have to go through it. You can't just read about it or, you know, watch a you know watch a podcast or whatever i mean it's, it's it's something you literally have to do right it's like of course all those things are great great to watch great to listen to the podcast great watching the youtube mm -hmm. videos motivation seminar fine uh, but there really is no no substitute for actually training your mindset right mm -hmm. like as we always say taking time out of the equation getting closer to our goals um by direct work on the mindset we know the exercises to build up our legs, yeah. squats, deadlifts, leg presses. You know, we, you could tell me what to do to get stronger arms, bench press, shoulder press, curls, tricep extensions. But then when you ask someone, how do you build confidence? You hear crickets. They mm -hmm. don't know how to build the confidence. And that's exactly why what we do is we, we're actually teaching them. These are the exercises that are going to help you build that confidence. And as you said, there's no substitute for actually going out there getting the hands-on experience, it's both and. It's the hands-on experience and the direct work in that mindset that's going to be the big success. You can't just learn and not practice, and you can't just practice and not learn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Both. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a, a, a great assessment, definitely. It's, uh, I think what you'll find as far as qualities of high performers go, you know, um, when you look at those types of people, what, what I think you'll find is, well, one, they're often terribly unbalanced, right? Because, you know, what you have to do to become great at something is you have to focus on it so intently that everything in your life other than that gets blocked out, right? So oftentimes you're not hearing feedback about how you're, you know, not, uh, you know, maybe not uh, living up to certain other areas because you just don't care, but you're just so focused on one thing, you know, and I think for, for a lot of athletes, you know, that's, that's a struggle they, they deal with after they, they don't 
belong in athletics anymore, right? When they retire from athletics, um, you know, I think it's a lot of struggle struggle for those folks to uh, realize and, and kind of, well, that, that's the lens they viewed themselves their whole life. Like every thought they had was through the lens of how will this affect this one thing, right? So, so you really have to be terribly focused and often that, that uh, leads to kind of, you know, things that make you really good at some things make you terrible at other things. Um, they're, they're generally never satisfied. Um, it's kind of a uh, achiever. Uh, I, I, I enjoy Gallup. Uh, I don't know if you uh, have, have done much with, with Gallup and the strengths finder stuff, but um, the idea of achiever is, is somebody who, who really takes pride in hard work, you know, and uh, you know, another talent that would probably be amongst common, highly common amongst top performers is, um, uh, uh, sorry about that. Lost my train of thought there for a sec. So, um, so, so they're uh, maximizers. So they they want to take something that's good and they want to make it great, right? So they're never satisfied with right here, right? So, um, and and then strategic. You know, you got to be strategic. So, um, so, so you're never to develop a plan to get to the next place and you take great joy in um you take great joy in working hard to achieve those things and so i think when you put qualities like that i think you'll find those uh common qualities amongst high performers especially in wrestling absolutely Makes a lot of sense. And now what kind of practical tips would you recommend people do, especially like high school, college? What should they be doing to prepare themselves? Is it internships, networking, um, learning certain skills, seeking out certain opportunities, getting a mentor? What are some of the things you recommend for someone who's still in school? Yeah, do, I, I would say do the work. Um, and I think getting a mentor is a, a, a good idea because look, um, you have to know what's possible. And oftentimes when you're younger, you don't know what you don't know. And it's right. I mean, it's, uh, so, so getting a mentor to help you understand what the possibilities are, um, are important. Um, I would say get to, I mean, really understand yourself, really, really figure out what you like to do, because if you want to do something you don't like to do at a high level, like it's just not compatible. You 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 can you can't you know if every day is a struggle to to perform at a high level, Life's it, you can't sustain that. Right. So find something you love to do. Um, you know, like we were talking about earlier, don't beat yourself up. You wanna you wanna go for that incremental improvement, but you know, make sure you set your goals to uh, to achieve that. And you gotta do the work. You know if if, if you're a, a wrestler or, um, it, you know, maybe you're not in a sport, you, you got to figure out the process of getting good at something, you know? Um, so, no, so yeah. yeah, no, you're right on point. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary, the common, <laughs> part, right? but, it's, right. but it's absolutely right. Like a lot of people are saying they're hard workers, but are you really working hard? And if you're working hard, are you, are you also working smart? And all those points you hit on, exactly that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, uh, I recently uh, started a, uh, a wrestling application uh, that, that kind of mirrors that, that idea of, of walking through your, your sales calls. And I'll talk about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously you can, you can see, you know, if you're a wrestler, you're in your head, you're kind of thinking in terms of, well, if, if I do this, if I'm here and I do this, then my opponent can do this, this, or this. And if he can do this, then I can do this and this. And if he does this then I'm going to do this and this. And, you know, what I, what I came to realize is there aren't, there, there really aren't any tools to help you through that process in the world of wrestling. Um, and, 
and really it's the same process uh, as, as far as business, especially sales. Um, it's, it's the same structure uh, to, to learning. So first you have to map out what's possible, right? And then once you figure out what's possible, you, you, so you've got the mind part down and then you got to do the body part. You got to do the work and you got to do the repetitions until you master it and you no longer have to think about it. Right. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what solve wrestling is, but you know, it's, it's, it's generalizable absolutely to, you know, sales performance and, and I would even say performance in any environment. Yes. Yes. And it, something with you, Wisconsin guys, because Ben Askren, <laughs> about, ben Askren speaks a lot about this too, that he felt like when he was wrestling because he saw, okay, A, a B or C could happen here. If someone, do, if A happens, I'm going to do E, F, G. If B happens, I'm going to do H, I, J. And so mm -hmm. he broke it down like that. And he said, and I'll never forget this. He felt like he was playing chess while his opponents were playing checkers. And it sounds a lot like with solve wrestling, that's what wrestlers are going to be able to develop this ability to be playing chess while their opponents are playing checkers. Dave Schultz and Mark Schultz are, are two other guys that I, the Foxcatcher guys are people that come to mind immediately. Also in Mark Schultz book, Foxcatcher, he said how he and Dave would write down what move to do in different situations. And at that moment, I mean, literally after I read that, I'm like, yeah, we added that to our wrestling mindset program where nice. we made, where, where we made it. So, okay. High single. This is how you're finishing that. What are your three setups to get there? What are your three finishes? Low single, three setups, three finishes, something like that, right? Along those lines. Sure. And now, and now what you're doing is you're, you're taking that specific area of, of, of knowing what to do in different technical situations and, and, and really taking that to the next level, which is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, imagine crowdsourcing all of the options from a collar tie. Right. Right. So, the, I mean, essentially, the, the patterns in wrestling are the positions you end up in. And from the positions, you have movements. And uh, so if, if, you don't, if you don't know how, if you can't put it down on paper, how the heck do you think you're going to be able to do it in a match, right? So in going through the process of actually thinking through making them, putting yourself in the perspective of what you want to do and then what, what are you vulnerable for, that's an important piece, right? I mean, especially in, in life or sales, like you have to know what you're vulnerable for, you know, um, you know, know your weaknesses. You know, I don't always care about my weaknesses as much as trying to do more of the stuff I'm good at, but you at least should know. Them. Um, and it's directly relatable to a, a conversation in a sales environment. It's like my, you know, I'm meeting with this person. I'm going to say this, all right? And then he might say this or this, and you map out the end goal you want to get out of the meeting. And, you know, all roads lead to that place. Um, you know, any branch of the conversation, you can see it in your head and you can walk it towards kind of your, your goal. So, um, you know, whether it's solve wrestling or you know, learning how to be successful in, in sales. It's, it's the same structure. They're self-similar processes. I, I love it. It's, it makes so much sense. Dave Patrick, the, um, the former CEO of Charles Schwab, I did, I did a meeting of the minds with him also, and, and he spoke about this also, how it's, it's so important that, I'm, with that wrestling and sales are, are so compatible. And he's surprised that when he went in, he went in, he gave a speech to the, a lot of the Penn wrestlers and a lot of them were saying, or not many people raised their hand that they were going to go into sales. And he kind of got on them like, what are you talking about? This is perfect for you guys. Because you're right. I tell our wrestlers, you should be able to talk through a wrestling match. If I do this, what are you going to do? And then you do that. What am I going to do to that? We should be able to talk through it just like in sales. I should be able to say, well, I, I might say this. And you'd say, well, then I would say that. And if I, okay, well, then to that, I would say this. So it's the counter to the counter to the counter. And eventually, at first, it might be uncertain. You get stumped a few times. And then you, you put the pen to paper. 
you have your, you know, your great app and then, and then there you're able to figure it out. So wrestling sales, it's just having those patterns, knowing where you're going. There's no uncertainty. And also you get to basically build a monster. You get to, you know, you, like you said, in this situation, you want to do the move that Jordan Burroughs does. In mm -hmm. this situation, Kyle Snyder. In this situation, Kyle Dake. And you fused it together into this great hybrid where now people are going to be able to get the best from all of their favorite wrestlers. It's phenomenal. Oh, thanks. No, it's, uh, you know, I think part of it is the mental part where you have to learn. And then the other part is the physical part where you have to do. And I think that there's no standardized way to ingest technique in the wrestling community. Uh, you can go on YouTube, you can go on, you know, even some wrestling related sites and look at the technique. But I think the major deficiency is that there's no standardized format. So if you want to search for all of your options for a, from a collar tie, you're going to get a wildly differing set of over a million, you know, different hits uh, that, that you could take uh, or routes you could follow. And, and they're all going to be different things. So what we're doing is we're trying to get to known positions and we're, you know, we're trying to help people kind of understand all their options. So it's, uh, I mean, there's really no way to catalog your wrestling knowledge in anything that you can access whenever you want. So most of the time wrestling, well, you know this very well because this is your business, right? Wrestling traditionally is done in the wrestling room. Well, that you, know, you could be doing productive things if you really love the sport and really want to be disciplined at it. So this, this is a tool that, that gives you the ability to uh, kind of take wrestling home with you. So That's great. That's great. And like you said, if you're searching through things on YouTube and flow wrestling and they do and track wrestling, they all have great things. They're unbelievable. Mm -hmm. sources. The, the difficulty is you have to sift through a lot yep. just, just to get to exactly where you want to be. I love that it's systematic. I love that you could go straight to it. It's just tremendous. How do we, well, I guess we'll close with, how do we send people your way with that? How do we get <laughs> linked up? Oh, well, 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 thank you. I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, we're just, uh, we're just early stages on here. So uh, you can sign up at solvewrestling.com. So you just sign up. Um, you'll see some base flow charts there. But really the point of it is going through the exercise of creating your own flow charts. And uh, you can share them with other people. Um, you can even make them editable and share them between two people. So you can collaborate with somebody or multiple people um, on how to build uh, all of the options from any position. You can put video or add a web link to each node so you can be communicating the same language. Like you might call something something, uh, you know, move A and I might call it move B, right? So the fact that there's a video demonstration, now we're, we're using the same language to talk about wrestling. And uh, I don't, to my knowledge, that that hasn't been done before is kind of creating a common language. So uh, yeah, just sign up at solvewrestling.com. So I appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Awesome, Eric. Yeah. So I, I hope all of our viewers, like whether you're a wrestler, whether you're in sales or just, or just in life, who's trying to get better and maximize your potential. This, this is the, all this information is for you. No doubt about it. Because even if you weren't a wrestler, having a systematic approach, having a flow chart, breaking things down, establishing patterns, that'll help you succeed on a diet. That'll help you succeed in your family, friendships, everything, any kind of career that you're in. So it's, it's tremendous stuff. Thanks a lot, Eric. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll drop a link to Solve Wrestling in the show notes on YouTube. Great. Thank okay. you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Yeah, you too.